All right. Well, hey, I know you said you got to go. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, but I, I uh, do you have like could we do like a lightning round real quick with like just a few few final thoughts. Sure. Okay. So I yeah. did bring up this earlier. I, I said I was going to bring up the anti gamer gators question from the kick chat. Um, and I didn't actually do it, but they wanted to know what you think of what some Gamergate people said is they think that, so some people in Gamergate said that they wanted quote unquote objective reviews and what they meant by that, I guess most of them seem to have meant by that, meant by that is they want the game, the reviewers to tell them, Hey, look, this game here, it's got good graphics. It's got good gameplay. The story's pretty good, whatever, right? Whatever. Um, but they don't want the political critique mixed in with that. And you can have the political critique separate, some people would say. Like, you can have, like, an article talking about the politics and, like, oh, this game is sexist, this game is Marxist, this game is too capitalist, whatever, right? Um, you can have that as a separate article, but it shouldn't be in the review. Um, do you think that Gamer Gators were onto anything about the quote-unquote objective review stuff? No. Yeah, I had this conversation at the time, too, and the the problem isn't that review. The problem is the lack of genetic diversity. If Kotaku and Polygon want to write those kind of reviews, it's their business. They should be able to do it. The problem is there should be other sites reviewing the games from a totally different, from the other political perspective. There should be a review that is totally just nuts and bolts, tell me about the gameplay, and shut the fuck up. The problem was there were only a couple of very large gaming media outlets. So when they do the same thing, that's what sucked. If if Polygon and Kotaka were totally opposite, the MSNBC and Fox News of the gaming press, you wouldn't hear that argument because there'd be something for everybody. The problem was there was just that. And the, the biggest... I think a lot of the anger stemmed from just this lack of genetic diversity in the gaming press. There needed to be at least three major outlets. One that was just the facts, ma'am. One that was totally social justice. And one that was totally, I like big tits and big guns. <laughs> and all of those would be totally legit sites. And then Anita Sarkeesian could rail against big tits and big guns and people would be mad at her and there would be a healthy debate, but no one would threaten her because they wouldn't feel the need to have to do that. Well, some assholes always would because there's always a criminal class and they're assholes. But generally speaking, that you could have a robust debate without getting really, really you know, frustrated because you knew there was a place where you could go to have that argument and a place you could go to read people refuting the argument. Because let's face it, when you go read or watch a stream that agrees with you, you're like, yeah, I agree with that. But when you watch a debate where your side scores a point against the other side, you're like, fuck yeah, God damn it, that's awesome. Like you get really, that's amazing. Like your team just scored a touchdown, right? And if the other side makes a point, you get really mad and defensive, but and you might have a sleepless night because like, well, there's got to be a way to refute that. But over time, you might actually alter your worldview just a, li a little bit. And just like the journalists never hear that they won, you never admit to yourself that you actually changed your mind. You just, just over time, you just incorporate part of a new belief into your belief system, but you're never going to admit that someone changed your mind, but you soften your view and then you just attribute it to age. Cause I'm old now, right? Like, Oh, you soften your opinions with age. No, you don't. Age doesn't do anything different. It just makes it harder to pee and uh, harder to get up in the morning. What really happens is you just hear more shit over time and it just sinks in and enough time has to pass between the time you heard it and the time you now believe it so that you don't remember that you're giving someone else credit for affecting your opinion. You're just, you just changed because you aged and you got wiser. But, th but without all that debate, you just get old and stupid. Okay, I got the last four questions. And uh, question Sorry, one. Sorry, it's my fault for not answering them tighter. No, no, you're fine. You're doing actually phenomenal. I love this. This is great. Um, first off, I want you to critique me a bit. Do Gamergate people like me 
downplay the harassment? Um, Based on what you've heard me say here, I guess. No, I wouldn't say you downplay it. I think you face a, uh, a no-win situation. I think everyone does when you have to decry your own movement. I, I face the same thing when I argue about Israel with people. Because I have a lot of progressive friends that, you know, hate Israel. And I'm like, all right. I mean, I totally get it. Um, I can see why. And then if you admit that your side does things wrong, the problem is that I need now need to wrap that up and go argue the other points. And it looks like you're not giving enough. You're not giving enough of yourself. You're not, you don't, you don't feel enough about the other side because now you're going to go off and talk about the things you want to talk about. I don't think there's any way that you can, I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know how often you have to acknowledge harassment to keep talking about other things. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when someone dies and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then you're like, but I'm hungry and I want to go eat. Like life does go on. So I don't, I, I, I'm still learning how to do this. And I, I learned it from sources I interviewed. I don't know how you admit your side did wrong sincerely enough and how often you have to do it so that it's, so the people know you're being serious, but at a certain point you have to stop saying that because you have other current issues to still delve into. So I don't, I believe you, but I don't know if that's because I kind of know you a little bit. Um, or some people just are really bad at being sincere. I don't know, but I, I believe that you believe that. And I think that's good. I don't know if other people hearing you or me believe it because people have still told me to this day that you didn't condone harassment enough and you were only aiding and abetting them and you must not care. I'm like, no, I care. I mean, if I fucked up by not saying it enough, I don't know what, there's no formula for it. So I don't know. But at a certain point I have to stop talking about Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu because I'm, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about the journalism. So I need to acknowledge that shut it down, not engage with it, and move on. But So what if, if I move on, it's not because I don't care. It's because I'm agreeing with you. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, that is a conundrum, and I've never, I, I, I don't know that I learned that lesson then. I don't know that I know it any better now. Okay, some Gamergate people say that, uh, sorry, some anti-Gamergate people have written articles saying that Gamergate caused Trump or like the alt-right pipeline idea. Have you seen that at all? What do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I um. Well, you know, the argument that like Trump didn't cause this either. Trump is was an opportunist to capitalize on Like Trump didn't create that which got him elected. People felt that, latched on to him. And so if you believe that, because, you know, otherwise you're crediting Donald Trump with suddenly informing 40 million people about their beliefs. Then I think it's equally ridiculous to say Gamergate caused that. Gamergate, if you want to make that argument, you could say was perhaps the first movement, online movement, to congeal it, right? I mean, you had the Tea Party in real time, in real in person, congealing that first sentiment. And then you could maybe make a, I mean, maybe historians will make an argument. The Gamergate presaged the online version of the Trump movement that, um, or that, that kind of political movement. So I can see that. But I don't think Gamergate caused that. How would that even work? It's a leaderless movement as you're, by your own definition. So a bunch of people got involved in it for a whole bunch of their own motives. Some, some were the reason that Gamergate started, some weren't. People made their own definitions out of it. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think maybe historians will make the argument that the two, the two congealing factors for Trump was the Tea Party, which was older, and the Gamergate movement, which was younger. One was in person, in protests, they met in restaurants, the other met only online.
But that's what I'm talking about. That's what historians would then argue about by pulling archival footage of everything on YouTube to prove their point, because historians love to debate. Can I ask a very brief follow-up? And you can just you could go as short or brief as long as you want. Um, but do you do you think most of the people involved were right wing or left wing or like moderate or like what? I think the loudest people were right wing, for sure. Well, that's like the GG think... revolt crowd, though. Like, I mean, out of like normal Gamergate people, I mean. Um. Some of them told me they were libertarian, but I don't know if they knew what that meant. Um, several told me they were anarchists, but then they were arguing about how the panel to set up the panel should be set up. That doesn't seem very anarchistic. <laughs> um, I would say a lot of them were younger people that, um, when people, and I deal with college students because I still, you know, I said I volunteer at a student newspaper. And I think at that age, your politics are emotional like you you respond more to hating something than understanding something enough to like so i think for gamergate if i had to guess where most of those people are today on the political spectrum i would say that they're more republican than democrat okay all right i guess though do you have any favorite moments during your time back then? Um, my favorite moment uh, was during the bomb threat. Um, we were standing outside. It was hot as hell, like 200% humidity. Um, and there was a reporter, a guy Mike from the, Palm Beach Post, which is a newspaper actually pretty close to Trump's house in, in West Palm Beach. Um, and he just was on his phone and he tweeted out, he didn't know what was really going on. He said, Gamergate called the bomb threat. And I was, and he used the hashtag, and I was walking around handing out bottled water to people because it was so hot. And I could see in real time <laughs> people <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I don't even remember who it was now. Someone I kind of knew um, walked up to me and said, "Who is who is this?" I'm gonna say his last name. Who's Mike? This 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 guy. What the fuck is this? And I'm like, "Okay, hold on, hold on." He's a reporter for the Palm Beach Post. He's a little older than me. He doesn't understand any of this stuff. He popped into some of this to airplay because he was there for the rest of the the convention, the conference. He. Uh, he doesn't know what he just did. He doesn't know the shitstorm that's about to hit him. Uh, if anyone figures out that he's standing here right now, so I'm going to go take you over. Let's walk over to him, and you can talk to him. But he, this is just like airplane, man. Like you can go yell at him, and you'll feel better. But he'll have learned nothing except you're a dick. That's just going to be his conclusion. So we can walk over there. And you can talk to him and explain that Gamergate wouldn't call it a bomb threat to airplay. That's not how this really works. And then you need to explain yourself really succinctly and tightly, like you're having a beer in a bar and you want to be, you want to tell an interesting story. And so we walk over there and he kind of walked over, stomping in the beginning and they got there and I'm like, Mike, this is, it. and he's like, he's like, what did I do? Cause he was looking at his, all the responses. I said, well, this guy's going to explain it to you. And I went back around with the water. By the time I came back around, they were having a very in, in animated but polite conversation. And afterwards, he's like, that was weird. And I was like, well, did it suck? He's like, no, no, it was actually pretty good. But Jesus Christ, <laughs> this is so, so, yeah, so he actually learned more in that conversation than he did from watching Mylianopolis talk for 10 minutes well nobody learns from my little listen i'm just talking for 10 minutes but uh it's funny is <laughs> i actually heard the same exact story like almost verbatim like three days ago from the person who you t 
talked with Paulo Munoz. He's in the chat, by the way. But the oh, person, so he, it was, it it was one of him, his favorite him, moments, too, I think. That was one of his, He brought it up. He brought it up, actually. I don't know if it was his favorite moment. He was something All else. Right, I, knew it was someone I, I knew it was someone I knew, but I, I, I was really hot and sweaty. I don't remember. So it was him. Okay, I didn't want to say it and then not have it not be right. So, yes, it was. That must have been that conversation. And I, I, I hope I recounted it accurately. But I remember walking back around and they were just talking. So I, I guess that was one of them. And, the, and, and you know, 1B would be uh, taking over the carport of a condemned house across from this historic meeting center and continuing the conversation there. Um, Milo was already already left because I think he was afraid the humidity was going to affect his hair. Um, but a number of other people stuck around, and we just continued this conversation in a carport, a condemned carport. Like, we just kind of trespassed onto this property, and the cops were milling about for the bomb threat, and they just kind of looked at us, and we kind of looked at them. And um, I think I told one of the reporters, because there were some TV reporters there, I said, well, you know, the bomb threat's illegal, and trespassing and a condemned house is illegal so they cancel each other out it's legal isn't that how math works yeah two negative numbers together it's positives so those were those were my two best moments and they were both during a bomb threat well i was going to ask other questions but we could throw those out because this is more interesting what was said during the part that nobody got to see or i guess it was a private conversation so maybe you should tell me i don't know what what part the, after the bomb threats came in, what was what you guys continued the conversation? Was there anything interesting that was discussed? Well, they actually recorded it. Someone posted it. I the think I saw the that thing? at the time. I saw that like contemporaneously. So the whole thing, right? Uh, or no? Yeah, yeah. The only the only um the only conversation that happened that I don't think I ever told anyone about is that um that it, Milo actually did leave with uh, Kathy. And I said, well, you know, we're going to continue the conversation. And my, he wasn't, wasn't impolite about it, but he's like, there's, he said something, and I don't remember the exact words now, I did at the time, but he said something like, there's nothing left for me here. And he just left. Um, and I just thought, like, that was just, and Kathy left too. And I understand she was, and it just struck me because like Kathy and Myla were two of the three people on the afternoon panel and neither of them seemed particularly interested in the movement that chose them. So, I mean, Milo, sure. But like Kathy too, like she was, she was very proud of her base mom sort of moniker. Oh, you mean Christina Hoff Summers or Kathy? Chris, Chris, sorry, Christina. Sorry. I got, yeah. See, this is my memory. I'm interviewing yeah, both Chris, of them actually coming up. Well, well Christina, yeah. Christina would be interesting what was it? Was Ash Scow or whatever? Yeah, I'm so. interviewing her too. If her if her media people allow it, she's in talks with them too, because she works for like a major major site now. Well, she she's like she's really on the ball, and she knows her shit, and she cared about the issues. Christina, Christina, what do I call her, Kathy? Oh, because Kathy was the other. All right, so Christina and Milo, they were buds. They left together. Um, before the whole thing started and we were backstage and eliciting promises of like be brief. Um, it just, it was weird to me that like Gamergate was so adamant about the, you know, panel to select a panel and these were their champions. And it just struck me that like most of them, the two of them out of the six people they had, those two, two were just not, not really there because the afternoon panel was supposed to be about how should online movements communicate their message better. Like you're, you've, you said you're, a, you know, a leaderless movement. So if you want to stay that way, what can we do better? Like what can reporters do better and what can you do better? How can we meet better in the middle and cover these things? Journalism. I mean, I, I'm defending journalism obviously during airplay, but I'm not, an idiot. I know that journalism needs to evolve with the world, right? I mean, journalism got its real big start with telegraphs, you know, during the Civil War. 
That's where it really took off. So now we're in the internet age. And so what does journalism have to do to adapt? We're not going to sell out our values, but we got to do some shit. And then what can you guys do as a leaderless movement to do better? Because you just can't, oh, we're leaderless. Figure it out, motherfucker. <laughs> like, you can't you can't do that. I feel like we so, tried hard, but <laughs> we disagree. Well, but like that, but, but that was where I was coming from because you know, I couldn't figure it out. But instead, it became Christina and Milo talking about none of that, like having their own agenda. So, uh, you know, and then when they left, I really, I was like, I, and Mark Seb is still there and Ash is still there and they're in, in a sweaty carport and a condemned house. Like, like them or hate them, agree with their viewpoints or don't, you have to admire people that believe enough in what they said they were going to do that during a bomb threat, and this is, this is Florida in summertime, man. I mean, I cannot begin. It is not a dry heat, right? You are, there's no way you're not, you're just totally soaked in sweat. There were people literally pouring bottled water over their head. And you're thinking like, well, that's going to get them all wet. Like they're already wet. There's not, you might as well be cooler and wet. So for them to stick around and there's only, like there's 20 people listening in the carport because it's not like a lot of people fit in there. Um, and there's one dude with his, his own camera and you're still having that conversation. And Lynn Walsh was there. So like, those are the people that most impressed me because like or hate what they're saying, you can't argue with their commitment. Yeah. I didn't know that about Christina Hoff Summers. I'm interviewing her on Saturday. I guess I'll have to bring this up. Um, yeah, I, well, tell her you can bring it up by saying, and I, I've just said it, and it's recorded. Um, but yes, they left together during the bomb threat, and I'd be interested to hear you, your recording to see how she responds to that and how she responds to what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything negative about her personally. I'm saying I, I mean, don't it is believe negative because I think it does reflect poorly on her as a person. And I'm well, not, look, I, well, maybe she's going to back out of the interview now. If she wants to, she can, but I, that's cowardice. I think we should still do the interview. But um, Well, I, hope, I hope she still does the interview, but, it, but it's possible. Like, I can't blame her. I don't blame her for anything she did at Airplay the way I blame Milo because Milo spoke for literally minutes on end without letting other people talk. That is just, that's just wrong to your own side. Christina just didn't, she talked a little too much too, but she just, she didn't really monopolize anything. She just didn't, didn't say anything particularly interesting, but that's on the Gamergate side because they were coordinating with their own speakers. So, you know, it's, it's, but, but but both of them are reading prepared text. So both of them kind of lied to me backstage. They, like we're going to be tight about this. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, she's, I don't know. I mean, Milo is an open book. I don't know enough about Christina's life. I mean, she yeah, I don't. I'm not going to make assumptions or anything. Like, I, I have, I'm on good terms with her. I've talked with her a few times. Like, we're not like. All right. Well, she's obviously smart, but I, de I definitely think that she, she was stayed. That's really disrespectful to the GamerGate community. Well, yeah. I mean, if anybody should, I mean, you guys should be mad about yeah. it. But I can understand at the time. You know, these are people on your side, so you can't call it your own side because you're you're passionate in the moment. But in retrospect, if you're looking at airplay as as a moment in time, I don't think your side was particularly well represented in that afternoon panel. I think you were better represented in the morning panel with people, you know, controlling their passion, giving examples of the gaming press, doing things that weren't appropriate and getting journalists who have no horse in this race to say, yeah, that ain't good. And then the afternoon panel, all you end up doing by, by speechifying is not only not representing your side, pissing off everyone in the room is like, what the fuck is this? And then not being, it's like, not only did people not understand what he was saying, they just hated him because he was not letting anyone else talk. And therefore, they're, and then when your side was saying, well, let them talk, you're like, well, okay, now I know these guys are dicks. So people just with, didn't have any understanding of the situation, automatically hated your side.
based on the their only interaction that they had with you. And you could argue, well, maybe they should go online and spend six hours figuring it out. No, that's not their that's not even their job. This is their free time. This is their Saturday for continuing education training as a journalist. They stroll into this afternoon panel. Some of them were not in the morning panel. They only showed up for the afternoon panel because they were in sessions in the morning. And they stroll in, and the first thing they hear is Milo and Christina reading shit. They were there for a conversation, and they're getting a lecture. And, you know, so if you want to blame anybody for, like, anything, I think you know who to blame because that was the whole point, right? To convince, you know, don't preach to the converted. You have new people here. Convince them of the rightness of your way. And then you have those two up there reading shit. It doesn't work for me, but it didn't work for those people. But, you know, and I wasn't, like I said, I was frustrated because I wanted to have a conversation. I wasn't mad about it because, like I said, I had no horse in this race. And I told other reporters, I told Polygon and I told Dottillo that uh, that perfectly encompassed Gamergate to me. The morning panel being very focused on journalism and ethics um, and coming to some conclusion and the afternoon panel being a shit show. That totally encompassed everything I experienced in Gamergate. (laughs) 